What is going on, guys? This is my news radar for Friday, April the 22nd, and we might finally have some information about when the new widgets panel on Windows 11 might actually become something, I don't know, that I might actually look at every now and again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, on Windows 11, there is this new panel down here that basically now looks like a weather icon by default, which I actually think is a good idea because it might draw your attention to it. You go, hey, there's the weather, let's click on that. And then from there, you're going to see a list of widgets here, like weather, stocks, your calendar, your to-do list, and there are several other widgets that you can add. However, right now, there really aren't very many, and they're only just widgets that Microsoft themselves has made and added to the system. Well, that might be about to change if this report from Windows Central is true. And Windows Central pulled this from a Twitter user named Firecube, who apparently found some evidence here within some code that references downloading widget updates in the Microsoft Store. And this code is from the widget manifest. So basically, it's a bit of code in this widget system that indicates that downloading that bitch from the Microsoft Store might soon be a possibility. And I think that that only makes sense. We can't have a widget bar with so few different widgets in there. Now, I still think that there's going to be a lot of problems with this little slide out menu on desktop. It's not really something I ever look at. It does make a lot more sense on a touchscreen device where you can swipe in from the side to bring it up. But to me, a big problem is just discovery. This thing is kind of tucked away, making it be like I said, giving it that weather icon, I think does help quite a bit to draw your attention to it. But discovery is still going to be a big problem. For someone like myself that uses a lot of widgets on their Android launcher, I don't really know that I'm going to want to do this here. Now, maybe if I could put the widgets actually on the desktop them itself, out front and center, I think that would actually be a way better solution than tucking them behind this panel. For whatever reason, this is the way that Microsoft has decided to go with it. But at the end of the day, if they can get just a few big widgets on board, you know, some of the people that they tend to work with most often, maybe they can entice enough other companies to try and make some as well. I tend to think that what's going to happen is we're going to have a handful of things here, even, even after some third-party accounts, some third-party companies make their own widgets for this. I don't think this is ever going to really take off all that well. You're not going to see apps that are in the store that are also on Android porting their widgets over. I mean, that'd be really great, but I just can't imagine that it's going to happen. But who knows? Maybe I will be wrong. It does seem like at least third-party widgets are going to be coming to help that at least a little bit. Now let's talk about the Pixel 6 for a moment. There's kind of two camps when people talk about the Pixel 6. I guess there's a third camp of people that just don't care one way or the other, but there are mostly two camps. There are the people that bought the device, love the device, think it's really, really good, and it's gotten a really bad rap. And then there are the people who maybe own the device and maybe they don't own the device, but they have a perception that it is very buggy. A lot of people have bought the thing that I know personally and have experienced quite a few bugs on their device. So like I said, there's two camps. Hey, it's buggy. Hey, it's really not that buggy. It's actually pretty good. And there's that disagreement between the two. And there's kind of been this question from the very beginning as people do talk about it being buggy. Big reviewers like MKBHD talk about the device having a lot of bugs. Does this kind of talk, does it actually have a measurable effect on how well this thing is actually selling? And we might have an answer here, the closest thing to an answer in this report from Android Police, which states the Pixel 6 is not selling very well at carriers, even with high salesperson kickback. So let's read from the very beginning here. They're talking about a report here by PC Mag, where Google is apparently res- resorting to strong spiff promotions. And basically, if you have never worked in a retail any sales environment before, a spiff promotion is, hey, if you sell X amount of this particular phone, or this particular object, you're going to get a kickback. You're going to get extra money on your check, let's say, every two weeks or something like that. Some sort of a kickback to incentivize you selling this thing. And Google apparently has partnered with different carriers like Verizon to sell more Pixel 6s with some aggressive spiff campaigns. And apparently... They're still not really selling them very well, and we have some reports that apparently representatives are blaming the phone's reputation of bugs and performance issues as being a limiting factor. 
Now, the first thing we got to look at here, though, is, you know, is the fact that Google is trying to use spiffs to sell the thing better? Is this something we should be concerned about? And I think the answer is probably no. Google historically has not really cared if the Pixel devices have sold all that well. They're kind of there just to show what Google devices maybe could be or should be. When I say Google devices, I should have said Android devices. They're there to kind of be the guiding light for Android, right? But they're not necessarily meant to compete with Samsung or Apple. They're just meant to be, hey, here's what we at Google think Android may Maybe should be. Well, with the Pixel 6, and as of late, they're actually trying to sell this hardware now. And that, that represents a pretty big change. But you can't just start trying to sell more, right? There's reputations and there's also customer purchasing patterns. A lot of these people are already, you know, in their Samsung ecosystem or they're in their Apple ecosystem or what have you. And Google going to a Pixel device, that's going to be a change. So you have to do a little bit to kind of push your sales forward. So the spiff thing, not weird, not strange. It's something I would actually expect Google to do if in fact they are serious about selling their hardware. And it appears that they it that they are. But the other side of this is why is it not working? Okay, because the Pixel 6 from a lot of people, great camera, updates for a long time. I think the thing looks good. I think it looks very unique. And obviously, like I said, has the one of the best cameras on the market and yet the thing is not selling. You know, I mentioned earlier that MKBHD has talked about his having bugs. He just did a long-term like re-review on it. And he still talked about how he took his SIM back out of it at the end of that little re-review period because it has too many bugs. And I think that we often kind of look at reviews from bigger people like this and we sort of say, well, you know, are the average people really watching this kind of video or they're really into these tech videos? Maybe they are. You know, Marquez gets a ton of views. He gets millions of views and he's not the only reviewer who talked about the pixel line having bugs and there have been a ton of headlines perhaps unfairly anytime that something goes any little bit wrong with the pixel devices everyone writes a headline about it right and i've even reported on some of it myself i haven't as of late because it just honestly felt boring it's like here we go again another minor pixel bug that gets covered by every single news outlet around there's one going around now where apparently google messages is draining the battery and these things are problems if you're experiencing them i'm not trying to downplay them but it really does feel like anytime there's any bug at all it gets blown out of the water we know that iphones have bugs samsung devices have bugs i've got someone on my twitter timeline literally just hours ago tweet about how they were at a a, a concert a show of one of their friends and the thing's shutter lag was so bad this is again on a samsung a modern samsung device that you couldn't even get you know, decent images in relatively okay lighting. No one really talks about that though, right? Like, but anything that goes wrong with the Pixel, everybody in the world is talking about it and it may be having a measurable effect. Now, at the same time though, compared to last Pixels, earlier Pixels, not the A models because those are much, much cheaper, but compared to more recent Pixel devices, it actually is selling much better than the devices in the past. So we're not saying that it's been an outright failure, but what we are saying is that it is probably the best device that they've made so far from a lot of people that I've spoken to. And yet it's not selling quite to the degree that it should be, maybe partially because of this perception. Google sales are up 56% year over year. So they're probably at least happy with some of that. But getting these sorts of reports, not quite what they'd be want to hear anyway. So it's a bit of a mixed bag here for Pixel 6. Let me know what you think about the coverage of Pixel 6, kind of how this coverage has gone. Do you think it's been painted in an unfair light? Do you have a Pixel 6? Has yours been buggy? Has yours been totally fine? Which camp are you in? How do you feel about all this? And let's wrap things up here with a couple of quick Surface Duo little quick news bits. So the first one is, both of these are actually coming from Reddit, but the first one is a concept. Because, as you know, with Surface Duo, we have two screens. And, of course, the thing folds open this way. Well, what if you took this and combined it with the Z Flip 3? Well, this Twitter user, whose name I'm just going to point at, I'm not going to try to say, here it is, right there, that one there, came up with this. This is what you would get if you combine the two. You would have a foldable that folded the other way around, like a slab that folded close, but... At first, I wondered, is this like just a line in the UI? But no, this is actually meant to be seen as dual screens still, just dual screens that fold over that way to make the device a whole heap of a lot smaller. Now, my biggest problem with this is that this logo should be up here. I know that it, look, we're being blank down here. 
But that's what we have here, right? We have blank and we have this. Of course, there's a camera here. And you say, well, there's a camera there and there's a camera there. So that makes sense. Well, the original duo was blank on the backside. This was added on later. I think that that looks weird. The logo being on the bottom is just strange to me. Move that to the top and I think it would look better. And at first when I saw this, I was like, well, these two screens are going to be tiny. They're going to be useless to do anything. And that's probably still honestly the case. Can you imagine using the, the launcher? I mean, I'd want to turn it sideways, right? And have it in like a book mode, maybe. It'd be very awkward to use. But at the same time, I am intrigued by this concept. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about this type of thing. Uh, would it be better when you span apps? Would this be a better spanning app situation than on Duo 2 because it's in the middle? Like Twitter would probably be okay. I bet a lot more apps would actually be okay spanning in this orientation. Very, very strange design. This will probably be the thumbnail for the video to get everyone's attention and to confuse everyone deeply. The second news story, also from Reddit, involves the work to port Windows to the original Surface Duo. I've shown you Windows 11, I've shown you Windows 10X. Well, now another Reddit user has apparently got, I know this says Windows 11, but it's not Windows 11, it's Windows 10. He just misspoke or mistyped. And he is, of course, using the same project that Gus has been talking about. I believe there's Gus there working on this, but apparently you can use this and install Windows 10 as well. So here is Windows 10 on the Surface Duo, the original one. You can see that back screen not working. Apparently touchscreen is also still not working. The same things apply, right? So he's using a wireless mouse and keyboard and he's got it plugged into a hub to have ethernet and he's going to go down here and open up the start menu and open up the web browser. But at any rate, We've not really got to see Windows running on Duo all that much. Well, here is a good video of Windows 10 running on the original Surface Duo, moving around, running seemingly relatively well. So if you've been curious as to what that actually looked like in action, there you go. There's an image of a link to that in the description down below. Guys, thanks for making it all the way through today's video. Extra special thanks to, of course, my YouTube members, of which there are a growing number almost every time I check. Thank you so much for that. That goes such a long ways towards helping me continue doing this full time. So if you see your name up there, thank you. And I appreciate you greatly. And if you're not up there, I don't know, that's fine too. You're watching, so that's really cool. Also, guys, I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>